A second woman has now come forward accusing Herschel Walker of pressuring her to get an abortion. This woman was apparently the mistress of Herschel Walker when he was married, and they were in a six-year relationship, and she brings a lot of receipts. But first, let's get to the basic details of this story. Per Rolling Stone, the woman recounted the particulars of her six-year affair with the Georgia Senate candidate, claiming they met in the 1980s when Walker was playing football. She said the romantic relationship began in Dallas and that Walker regularly said he loved her and even promised her he was going to divorce his wife to be with her. The woman says she became pregnant in 1993 despite being on birth control and that Walker convinced her to get an abortion and gave her money for it. She says she went to get one but didn't follow through with it, after which an upset Walker pressured her to go back. Now, the details in theory should be devastating for Herschel Walker given that his base is largely comprised of right-wing evangelicals because you have two sins here. You have an abortion once again and adultery. Now, the woman is claiming that she's an independent politically and she supported Donald Trump, but she's calling Herschel Walker a hypocrite and says that he's not fit for office. So it just goes to show you that if there's any claims of this being a political hit job, it doesn't necessarily seem that she disagrees with Herschel Walker ideologically, just that she's coming forward because she believes that he's a hypocrite and he's not doing what he says he's doing. He's not living the way that he says he's living. Now, they come with two main pieces of evidence. First and foremost, the woman's attorney, Gloria Allred, shared a photo of Herschel Walker allegedly on her bed in a hotel. Now, it's impossible to confirm that this is him through the video here, but hopefully they'll scan the photo so that way reporters can see it and dissect it. And they also shared this voicemail, which is allegedly from Walker. And this confirms that there was indeed a seemingly serious relationship between the two at some point. Let's listen. I was thinking about you. Uh, I don't know what I did. This is terrible. I'm calling from a uh, restaurant. Be the one who's got a phone that I can use that you can put something in and be able to call out. All the other phones, you have to have a, some kind of telecom card or something. I have the slightest idea what it is. But I wanted to call you on your machine and try to talk to you. What I can do is I'm going to try to call you back while I'm here, but I have to call you like early in the morning because it's late at night there when uh, I'm up and the restaurant is open. But I keep trying to call you. I want to say I love you. Okay. So it sounds like him. So I think that they've sufficiently established that they indeed had an affair. There was some relationship there. Now, in terms of the abortion story, she doesn't necessarily have receipts like the last woman had, but she does recount her story. And we'll listen to what she has to say here because she's very clear that she did not want to get an abortion and she wouldn't have done it had Herschel Walker not pressured her into doing it. After discussing the pregnancy with Herschel several times, he encouraged me to have an abortion and gave me the money to do so. I went to a clinic in Dallas, but I simply couldn't go through with it. I left the clinic in tears. When I told Herschel what had happened, he was upset and said that he was going to go back with me to the clinic the next day for me to have the abortion. He then drove me to the clinic the following day and waited for hours in the parking lot until I came out. He then drove me to get medications and supplies as prescribed and then drove me home. I was devastated because I felt that I had been pressured into having an abortion. After the abortion, I felt that Herschel began distancing himself from me. I fled Dallas within days after the abortion and did not go back to even visit for the next 15 years because I was so traumatized by what Herschel had put me through. So Herschel Walker wasn't just supportive of the idea of her getting an abortion. He pressured her into getting an abortion that she didn't want to get. Now, if you are an evangelical and you genuinely believe that abortion is tantamount to murder, I don't believe that, but this is what they believe, then how can you still continue to support somebody who is hypocritical? I mean, that's two abortions, two murders in your view, so doesn't this now make him a serial killer? I mean, if you think that these were two human lives that were taken and not just clumps of cells, then you have to admit 
that if you still continue to support Herschel Walker, you are supporting a serial killer at this point who murdered two babies, according to your standards, not mine. So will this hurt him? It's difficult to say. Certainly, there was a swing in support for Warnock following the last abortion story. As 538 reports here, on average, there was a three-point shift in favor of Warnock. And whether or not this story will convince the evangelicals who haven't already been convinced, that's a different story for a different day. But it's hilarious to me how you have all these stories about the children that Herschel Walker had but didn't raise about the abortion, and he still has the audacity to attack his opponent, who is a literal minister, mind you, and claims that he's a sinner, who is not admitting that he's a sinner. Listen. So I'm going up against a minister who's a sinner. He's a sinner. And he got to admit it. He got to stand up and do what's right. A lot of people in Washington do what's right by the people that let them into office. So right now, they've forgotten about it. So in case you couldn't make out what he was saying, he said, I'm going up against a minister who's a sinner. He's a sinner, and he's got to admit it. Herschel, take your own fucking advice. Are you serious? I mean, Republicans are so brazen at this point that despite overt hypocrisy that's in your face, they still say things like this and accuse the other person who they're running against of doing what they've done. You've now pressured two women into getting abortions, or at least you've pressured one of them. The other one, I don't know if she wanted to get the abortion, but the first one, I can't recall the details at the top of my head, but you certainly paid for the abortion. There's evidence of that. But with this one, the woman is saying that you pressured her into getting an abortion, and yet you're still claiming that Raphael Warnock isn't admitting to his sins. Because the assumption, if you're a Christian, is that everyone is a sinner, right? But you still haven't confessed all of your sins because we're still finding out more dirt about you, Herschel Walker. How many more abortions did you pay for? I mean, again, I've got to I've got to emphasize this point by the standards of evangelicals. What he did was tantamount to murder. So if they still go out there and they support this serial killer in their mind. Then it seems like evangelicals aren't very consistent. This isn't about policy. This isn't about abortion. This is just about tribalism and their team making it to the Senate. So whether or not this hurts him again, I think that that's an open question because I think that anyone who was turned off by the abortion story, if they haven't been by now, they're probably not going to be convinced by a second story because there's a large number of Republicans who assume that every single story that comes out is essentially a manufactured fake hit piece by the fake liberal media. So you can't assume that this is going to have 100% impact, but will it make a dent? I'd imagine yes, but it's difficult to determine that because again, we're in a hyper-polarized state of politics where people aren't necessarily basing their decisions on the policies of the candidates. It's just, oh, you're a Republican? Well, at least you're not a Democrat. I'm voting for you. So we'll have to wait and see, but either way, I mean, this just doesn't look good for Herschel Walker, and he may be one of the biggest hypocrites to ever run for the U.S. Senate. But, I mean, being one of the biggest doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't others because there's a lot of hypocrisy to go around. It's just that maybe he's the most brazen about it. But either way, I'm not surprised by the story, to be honest. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician.